Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So this is what we're going to be creating today. It's a product water splash. For example, these could be waterproof iPhones or a smartwatch. It could be a piece of fruit. It could be a Coca-Cola bottle. You can imagine anything you want here. It's a very simple setup, so this will be a beginner tutorial. You can definitely do this in a few minutes with me. Um, if you're new to the channel, hi, welcome, my name's Jesse, I'm a VFX artist based in Los Angeles and I've been making a lot of tutorials, I'll be making a lot more. So if you don't want to miss out on any of the future content, be sure to subscribe and if you could give me a thumbs up, that would be great. So let's watch the preview. So I rendered it with pretty low settings, so it's it's full of noise, but you get the idea. Uh, it's not as exciting here, but then if you add some sound effects and some good old lens flares from the legend himself, Andrew Kramer, you end up with something that's not too shabby. And if you imagine this being maybe a 30 second promo for some product and this shot would only be in there for two seconds if you just sort of flash it like this it looks pretty cool and it's something that didn't take much work to do so i made a few more examples to show you i have just these two letters not my best work but just wanted to show you that you can add anything into the same setup just replace the object with your logo, whatever you want, run the sim and you end up with something that's relatively cool. And then I rendered the same thing with this Coca-Cola bottle. Um, so the splash is too much here obviously, but this could maybe be an image. You could play with the splash going to the sides more. Um, it could be a short or a flash of video to post on Instagram, something like that. I don't know, but I just wanted to give you guys some ideas. So let's go into Max. I've already prepared my starter scene. So I have, this is just the iPhone 10. I just copied it over, uh, made it bigger and replaced the background just to sort of imply that maybe there's three versions of this phone you know, XS Plus, X and XR, whatever. Um, then I'm working in unit setup, metric centimeters, one unit is one centimeter as per usual. So we can go straight into Phoenix and make a liquid SIM grid. I kind of scale this. I mean, the way I made the project is just I followed the grid just to make things simple. So this is not to scale these phones would be bigger than in real life but again the important thing is that you end up with something that you like and that is working for the shot it's not that important that everything needs to be you know relative to real world scale unless you're working on some kind of a high-end vfx shot so just you know make a grid that's gonna cover the entire area make this a little wider because if you imagine this being rendered in you know 16 by 9 you want you want to make sure that the edges of the grid are off the screen so make it pretty wide and then we can make our emitter so let's just make a cylinder like that you can make it an editable poly select this polygon make it id 5 and then you can rotate it maybe maybe 60 degrees you know just imagine the water shooting out of here into the phone and making the splash so you kind of want it to shoot up just like here so that it can slowly fall down so maybe like that that's good, you can copy it twice. So we have our three emitters and then you can go to 
helper, phoenix, liquid source, make a liquid source, add all three of these cylinders, like that, make the ID 5, which means that the water will only be coming out of these polygons that we selected. Then for the outgoing velocity, uh, you want to do 200. I mean, you can put any value you want in here, but that's I'm just showing you what I did to get this exact splash going. So I did 200 centimeters outgoing velocity with noise being 0.3 across 50 frames which means that we can set a keyframe here on frame 49 and then on frame 50 we can make this zero uh, I'm probably never gonna learn how to do this correctly but again and so okay so this would be set up correctly so from point I mean from frame zero to frame 49 we have velocity 200 and then on frame 49 it stops it's at zero and no more water stops coming out. You can see that here. So we get that one splash. We get that one splash, which stops and then it starts falling down. Um, now we can go into the settings here. So what I did for that was dynamics, gravity. You can turn off motion inertia, but the grid isn't moving anyway, so it doesn't matter. Gravity, you can do 0.7 steps per frame four, just because it's a pretty fast moving liquid. For time scale, I did 0.1. Again, I'm setting the gravity lower just so the splash is, doesn't fall down as fast and it looks like it's more slow mo. Time scale 0.1 will basically slow it down by a factor of 10. Um, everything else here is set to default, no splash, no foam. For output, just as always, you know, set your cache output folder, check velocity to render this with motion blur, which I didn't do. You can, but you don't have to. I've watched a lot of videos online and um, for some reason when companies do renderings of water they do it without motion blur I think it's just because it makes it look sharper and also we're going for that slow motion look and if this was really shot in slow-mo there would not really be any motion blur so up to you and at this point you would just go to simulation and f we can leave the resolution pretty low right now we just want to make sure that everything is working so let's hit start and we have liquid coming out everything's working fine under preview you can show the mesh and let it sim so while this is simming we can add a few lights that's another thing that I love about Phoenix is that unlike in other software where you might have to just stop doing whatever and let, let it sim. You can just continue working. So let's make a regular light here. You can make it multiplier three, make it invisible, copy it over here, rotate 90 degrees. And then let's make another in the front. that and then I like to put one on the top as well like that maybe you can make this one wider and then what we're gonna do is make a V-ray plane which basically creates an infinite floor um, so if you were to create a regular plane you know, when you render the scene out, you might still be able to see the edges and trying to scale this into infinity just never really works. So V-Ray provides you with this infinite plane, 
which you know looks just like a square but once you render it out it will it will be an infinite floor going into the horizon so for the floor material we can just do something reflective to get that nice reflection on the ground um, so we can do let me stop the simulation because it's getting kind of slow but we can do just black in the diffuse I never like to do completely black I would rather do like three and then make it darker in After Effects by boosting the contrast but if you make something completely black um, it just it just never really looks good so I would just leave it like this for the reflection you can raise that up you can leave the glossiness at maybe 0.9 and at this point I think we can just go into our regular view here like a perspective view find something that looks pretty cool and then you know you can make a regular V-Ray water material so water is diffuse black reflection pure white refraction pure white IUR 1.3 and apply it to the um, Phoenix box and you can select edged faces so you can still see the water and for my rendering settings I'm doing just bucket and maybe I would do two and four GI is just brute force and light cache maybe we can do 2000 um, set your resolution to whatever you need to do and hit render Oh, I have set a sequence so no we don't want to save the file and we just want to render a single image oh and I forgot to apply the material to the V-Ray plane so uh, apply the floor material to the V-Ray plane now render and that's pretty close to what I had in my example now the floor is still getting illuminated by the lights in my example I don't think it is I think here um, let me check it is in my example too but what you could do if you wanted the floor to be completely black and only see the reflections which is a pretty cool look you could just um, select the light and go under exclude and exclude the V-Ray plane and you would have to do these for all of them so exclude V-Ray plane okay exclude V-Ray plane and exclude V-Ray plane and now if I render it the floor is basically pure black and the only thing that's giving it diffuse is the reflection of the phones and um, the, the screens of the phones are illuminating I mean they're emitting light and I'm, I just did that by copying the diffuse map which is my which is basically my screen into the self illumination so you don't have to make a V-Ray light material you can just copy the diffuse map from here to here and set the self illumination to a value that you like I found that 50 is not too bright so that when I render it it looks like the display is on and it's reflecting into the floor obviously the resolution is super low here so after you're happy with everything just go under grid and raise the resolution to something that um, you know your machine can handle and that you're willing to wait for uh, you know I always like to raise it if I was doing this as a final rendering or final simulation for a client I would try to go to something like 0.2 centimeter cell size maybe make it 0.25 so it's 150 million particles you know you can play with the grid um, so that you're not simulating extra space where you don't need it so we really don't need any space here in the back so I could just you know shrink the grid and move it forward 
and I've just saved myself 50 million particles just by doing that. So that's something to keep in mind and play with. And then in After Effects, I just added some curves, as I do always. And, you know, then you can add some optical flares to add it some spice. And, you know, I edited the little teaser that I made to this music track, just beat by beat. So that's it for this tutorial. It was a super quick one. I hope that, you know, it shows you that you can get pretty impressive results with Phoenix with not a whole lot of work. Really, we haven't changed almost any settings here. And we're getting something that's pretty cool. So thanks again for watching. I'm gonna have more videos coming out probably tomorrow I'll have another one so yeah thanks for the support guys and I'll see you tomorrow